So before we get started, do hit this button to subscribe and click this bell to be notified of new content. And do share the video if you found it helpful. Thanks. Hi there, my name's Louise. Um, I'm 38 um, and I'm from Northumberland. Um, and today what I really wanted to do was just share with you a little bit around the story um, and my journey that I've been through um, on my path to recovery. Um, just a little bit of background. So um, before I got sick, um, I was super fit. Um, I would run up to 50 kilometers a week. Um, I had a Peloton bike um, and I would go on the bike. Um, I would do hit classes and I would walk miles and miles and miles um, on a daily basis. So um, super fit, I had a full-time job. Um, it was quite a stressful job I had. Um, and I've also got a little boy um, as well that I look after. So my life was super busy um, prior to being sick. I literally did not stop. Um, and my husband used to laugh and say, are you doing that extreme cleaning again, Louise? Um, because if I did get time where I was just sitting, I was then up trying to clean the, the, the whole house. It felt like at that point, I guess, that I was just always on the go. But I, but I liked it that way. I liked feeling energetic and like I was always on the go. Um, from from a, a health perspective, um, I felt healthy. I often felt a little bit tired, but I, I just put it down to... You know you've got a little boy um and you're always on the go so that that's why you're feeling um a little bit tired um i would say i was always um quite highly strung as a person so um previously um I, I would take things to heart quite easily i was quite sensitive um, and i would get stressed with work um in terms of um if a meeting didn't go well or i felt like i could have done better at something um so looking back i was living a life on the edge really um very physically active put my body through a lot of stress physically um but also mentally as well which now it's only now retrospectively that, that i can see that um so really um i started to feel sick or started to get sick um last october so october 2020 and the first symptoms that that i noticed were um feeling like i was getting flu um, so I never actually got flu in the sense of like having to be in bed, but I would constantly have um, like a feeling of like my skin was sore to touch. My legs were achy. I had a headache. I was very, very tired. And these symptoms sort of came and went and I never really understood why I was getting them. I often thought because it was the time when COVID was like really sort of rife in the country. I kept thinking, am I, am I getting COVID? And I kept going for tests. And obviously, um, you know, I, I, I didn't have COVID and, and really um, I just didn't know at that point what was happening at all. Um, as a lot of us do in this scenario, um, I ignored, I ignored it and just kept going, um, thinking if I get out, if I do some exercise, you know, I'll feel better. Um, unfortunately, um, that wasn't the case. And I started to correlate these periods of feeling really unwell with when I was pushing myself more physically. So if I had gone for a run um, and I'd done a particularly um, long or intense um, session, that's when I would feel that um, I would get these symptoms or these symptoms would intensify. Um, so I started to started to correlate it to that and started to scale down um, the exercise a little bit at this point, um, but very much just, just kept going. Um, the situation, I guess, deteriorated and by sort of the end of January, beginning of February, um, I knew that something wasn't right. Um, I had been to the doctors in January um, and there was some deficiencies identified. Um, so I did start to supplement for them. However, in the next few weeks that followed, I actually felt worse rather than better. Although my symptoms, um, although, sorry, the, the levels were improving um, with the, the deficiencies that, that I identified. So that was really disappointing. Um, and I didn't really um, understand why I was feeling worse when seemingly I, I was getting the right nutrition into us at that point that they thought that I was lacking. Um, 
So I went back to the GP several times. Um, I was also seeing um, a nutritional therapist at this point um, who was advising me a little bit about my diet. Um, and it was at this time, so by now it was sort of February, March time that um, the doctor spoke to me about ME-CFS. Um, when I heard those words, they didn't really mean much to me until I got off the phone and started to Google. And then um, that was when um, I started to get extremely worried about the situation um, and started to be really concerned about what the, the future might hold for me. Um, so my next step, as a lot of people do, was to get on Facebook and start to have a little look in some of the Facebook groups um, to see what helped people, what helped people um, recover. Um, by this point, I was off work. I couldn't work anymore. Um, I just felt far too tired. I felt like the symptoms were far too intense um, and I just thought it would be best that I went off. Um, so I got onto these Facebook groups and didn't join um, looking back the most helpful um, Facebook groups that were out there. So um, after reading several posts that you can't recover from this, this sort of situation, this sort of um, illness or condition, um, I was at that point terrified absolutely terrified and I cannot stress at that point how scared and terrified I was. Um, I had created a movie in my head that I was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. I wasn't going to see my little boy grow up because I wouldn't be able to get out of bed um, and really my mind um, ran away with me at this point and it's safe to say um, I was in a really dark place, toughest place of my life really. Um, at that time and to a certain po point regret going into those Facebook groups um, because there was very little in the form of help or support that I, that I got from there it was it was all doom and gloom um, however um, on the flip side the saving grace is that I got Simon's contact details from one of those groups so somebody had posted Simon's um, Facebook group as a link in there and I was like I'm going to I'm going to join that group and have a look about look look at what that one's about. Um it definitely seemed um more positive um initially. So um so yeah, so I, I went into that Facebook group um and and that's when I started to learn about Simon, the the types of services Simon offers. Um and I got a lot of support from the members of that Facebook group with the first ever post that I put in there. Um I was just inundated with kindness. Um, so that's when I, I found out about Simon. I um, read his free report, so the, the missing piece, um, and found that super helpful. Um, there was a couple of things that really resonated um, with me in that report. And it was almost like when I read it and when I watched the videos, the penny dropped. I realised why my body was like this. I realised why it was that I was feeling the way that I was. And I guess that was the first bit of control that I felt like I had over this condition um, because I started to understand it. And I think that was absolutely key for me. Um, but talking about sort of your sympathetic versus your parasympathetic nervous system. So your sympathetic nervous system being your fight or flight. Um, it's safe to say that for the last four years, since having my little boy, I've probably been about 80% in that sympathetic nervous system um, activation. So in that fight or flight, um, my sleep hadn't been well for years. Um, I'd been really ambitious at work, um, taken on a lot. Um, I'd started, started my own business during that time as well. So there was a lot of stress over that period and having the personality type that, that I felt like I did have, um, that definitely um, contributed to being in that fight or flight. So that really made sense to me. I was like, yes, I can understand why I'm like this. And with the excessive exercise on top of that, this is what's happened to my body. Just to be totally clear that at this point, um, when I finished work and when I started to work with Simon, um, I struggled to walk up the stairs. Um, I struggled to walk along the street. I couldn't do any form of intense exercise at all. Um, I struggled with my focus. So I felt like um, I couldn't focus on anything. Um, I couldn't 
I couldn't feel excited about anything or happy about anything. I was just consumed by this fog of MECFS, the worry of it, um, the, the focus on my symptoms, monitoring my symptoms. So at this point, I was writing down in a diary every day around how I felt about um, my symptoms, how intense they were, scoring them. Um, so at this point, really, um, I was I was in I, I was really struggling. I couldn't look after my little boy. Um, and I lost a lot of weight, so I couldn't eat at this point and um, really struggled just to keep anything down. So I had my first session with Simon. So um, he offered 30 minutes free of charge just to talk to him and instantly talking to him, reflecting on the, the, the free report that I'd already read. I knew Simon was going to be able to help me. Um, I felt confident. Um, he was confident that that helped my confidence as well um so started started to work with simon at the point where i started the first module with simon um i absolutely felt prior to going into that doing the pre-learning and um, that i'd been tasked with um that i knew the theory i knew why i was feeling like this and i knew exactly what i had to do um to really um break this pattern um, and really start to recover and feel better. However, I didn't know how to do it. So the what was there, but the how wasn't. And that's what I really needed that support um, from Simon with. And I absolutely um, got that. Um, at this point, I was about 80%, 90% of having unhelpful thoughts um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I'll talk to you about how that's improved in a second. So after my first session that I finished with Simon, I felt like I was fully equipped to start to do the doing. So I already knew the theory, but I knew now what I needed to do to break some of these unhelpful thoughts that I was having and these unhelpful habits that I got myself into. Um, Simon often said that, um, you know, the more you practice something, the better you get at it. And um, I was clearly very good at these things and I clearly practiced them for a long time. Um, but I felt like I had my, my, my tool belt with us. I felt like I had a box of tricks now um, that I could really sort of use to break some of these patterns that I've got in. Um, so some of the changes were quicker than others. Um, some things um, developed quite quickly. Um, and I think one of the things that did was was trust. And it was probably something that prior I underestimated in my recovery. So people kept saying, Louise, you'll get better. Like you'll absolutely get better. But it didn't matter how many times somebody told me that. I never, ever believed it. But quite quickly after starting to work with Simon, I started to um, develop that trust. So I started to really believe that I could get better, that I was going to get better. Um, and I think at that point, um, that's when I really started to turn things around and really started to notice that my health was going in the right direction. Um, so I set myself some challenges along with Simon um, and some of these were, were challenges regarding um, my thoughts, but some of them were physical challenges as well. So after I'd rode on the Peloton so often and loved it so much prior to getting sick, it was a big sort of like elephant in the room up until then. I couldn't really look at it. I definitely couldn't like touch it or go on it. So one of the, 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 the achievements that I had quite early on was just sitting on it. I definitely wouldn't have done that um, without chatting it through with Simon first. Um, but just sitting on it made a huge difference. Um, it made us um, feel, yes, I can I can start to do this. Started to just pedal it a little bit. It wasn't even switched on, but just pedal it a little bit. Um, and all these like small changes and these small steps were all steps in the right direction and they were all building my confidence. Um, so I started to enjoy things more. Um, shortly after working with Simon. So in the first three to four weeks, um, I started to enjoy things more. And something that sticks out in my mind was going to the fair with my um, husband and my little boy um, and actually just being able to enjoy myself. I was present that day and that was something that really I hadn't been for many, many weeks, months beforehand, even years beforehand, because even before I got sick, I was always thinking about the future or thinking about something that had happened in the past. 
So that day was a real milestone. And that day I was happy being me. I didn't look at other people and think, oh, I wish I was them, which is what I used to do prior. Um, which sounds a little bit ridiculous, but when you're feeling unwell and you've got quite a serious um, illness or condition, you sometimes just want to be anybody but yourself. Um, so that was a real turnaround for me that that day um, I felt that way and I felt super proud after I did it, which again, I would never ever be sort of prior, you know, thinking to myself or t talking to myself about how well I'd done at something. Um, so that was a real milestone for us. So where am I at now? Um, what's happening now? So I've been working with Simon for about six to eight weeks now. Um, I'm going back to work next week, um, which is absolutely amazing. I'm super excited to go back um, because um, I, I'm really excited to put into practice everything I've learned because um, the techniques and the tools that Simon's given me are going to help us both professionally as well as personally. I walk 10,000 miles as a minimum each day. So that's my baseline now, um, which has vastly improved from where I was at, where I could barely walk along the street. And now I can do that with freedom and enjoyment um, without the monitoring of the symptoms that I used to have. I do some light circuits um, in yoga um, for, for tone and exercise and stretching, um, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. Um, completely different to the intensity that I'm used to, um, but I have no doubt at all um, that, that I will get there with the, the more intense exercise. And the biggest one for me is I've learned to be more playful. I've learned to enjoy my life and enjoy the small things in life. So just looking at a tree and looking at the absolute beauty of it or a flower or the ducks swimming by in the river, that would have gone unnoticed. The old Louise wouldn't have even acknowledged those things. It's taking time to stop, to look at them, to soak them in and enjoy them. Just gives you so much pleasure in your life. Um, it's safe to say um, that I've definitely rediscovered myself. Um, life isn't a serious anymore. Life isn't a race for me anymore. Um, I've definitely calmed myself down. Um, and really started to enjoy who I am um which is major so I think the thing that 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 I constantly remind myself of is recovery isn't straightforward um it it doesn't go up in a line like that you have days where you go up and down and weeks where you feel better than others the important thing is that you keep on that trajectory of going upwards um so yes I still have days where you know I'd I, I don't feel as well as other days um, but on those days that I'm not feeling so well I thoroughly feel like I'm equipped to deal with that in that my mind isn't going to spiral um, and that I'm not going to focus on those symptoms in the way that, that I would have done and catastrophize the situation. Working with Simon just in summary has been amazing. Um, he's one of the most authentic and genuine people um, that I've ever met. Um, I feel like now when I start to work with him, he's part of my team Um, you know, I'm there to, to get better Um, I'm working towards doing that. My family are there to support us, but Simon's part of that team as well. And I know that if I need that support from him, he's absolutely there. Um, so if you're in the same position as I was where you're trying different things um, you feel like um, you're never going to get better, um, really consider um, the steps that are there that you can take um, to, to um, maybe start to feel better or, or work towards your health um, and definitely, um, you know, contact Simon um, because he's super helpful um, and he would definitely um, take that time to talk to you. Um, so thank you so much um, for listening to this. I hope that it has been helpful um, and um, wishing you, you all the best. Hi, old Simon Fermenter here. Louise recorded that video in June of this year. It is now the 4th of August. I asked Louise for an update and she sent me a message today. She said, I have progressed since June. There are things I'm doing such as working full time, traveling 60 miles round trip to work twice a week, hosting a party, which is something she did at the weekend, 
etc. So if you'd like to watch a video where I talk about the nine steps that I focus on when working with people, click the link below and send me a message. Put the word steps in the message box and I'll send you the link to that video. If you've got any questions, comment below or get in touch. Thanks for watching. Wishing you great health. Bye for now.